Hey, what's going on YouTube? So today, I'm gonna turn this wine chiller into an incubator for reptile eggs. I happened to get this wine chiller for $50 on Facebook Marketplace. But I didn't get it until after I actually bought this small fridge on eBay for $140. I've been looking for a broken mini fridge with a glass door for the past three weeks and I eventually gave up and went to eBay and that's where I bought this one. I waited a week for that mini fridge to show up in the mail and the day after this fridge came up on Facebook Marketplace for 50 bucks so I grabbed that as fast as I could. The first thing you want to do when you want to turn a refrigerator into an incubator is gut the entire system. You need to take out all the cooling mechanisms in there. Um, there'll be like a radiator usually and a bunch of copper tubing and all the way at the bottom in the back of the refrigerator there's usually some compressor with coolant in it. You have to cut the pipe and the coolant will uh, spray out. It'll be pressurized so make sure you're in a well ventilated area and when you cut it make sure you step away and let it drain for a couple hours at least. The next thing you do after you've gutted the refrigerator is you need to seal up all the holes that are inside the entire container because you need to separate the humid air that's going to be inside the incubator from the insulation inside the walls of the refrigerator. So you can use silicone sealant or you can use HVAC vapor seal tape. This specific fridge has a false back and a false ceiling with fans so that you can circulate air throughout the entire refrigerator to give you a more even temperature gradient. Here I'm just removing the false ceiling so that you can see the fans and the holes that I had to cover with the HVAC tape. Not all fridges have this, but some have freezer areas that you can remove to give yourself more space inside the refrigerator. When the 12 volt cell phone charger comes in the mail, I'm gonna set up these fans so that it can circulate the air, but that might not be until the day after. So here you can see the false back where the fans would blow the air into the rest of the refrigerator. It's just a big plastic sheet with some slits cut out for circulation. Here on the top, you can see all the HVAC tape that I put down to cover all the holes that were for wires and screws for holding in a PCB and a temperature probe for when it was still a fridge. There was a huge hole here because there was a bundle of wires going to the PCB, so I covered the whole thing with this HVAC tape. Make sure to cover every single hole because you don't want anything to mold the insulation inside the walls. Once you've gutted the entire refrigerator and sealed all the holes, the next thing you move to is the heat tape. This here is flex watt heat tape and it's usually sold by the foot. The cord is usually sold separately as well so you need to buy both. I actually bought 6 foot of heat tape because my plans were for that mini fridge back there, but it happens that 6 feet is enough for this fridge here too. I didn't show it on camera but the cord has two clamps on it that look like this and you need to connect them to the silver strips on the edges of either side of the heat tape. This will usually require that you have some pliers or something that can clamp it down because it needs to penetrate through the plastic and the metal has to touch the strip inside the plastic. After you've clamped the cords onto the heat tape, the next thing you need to do is cover up the exposed metal with these plastic insulators. You don't want to have the metal exposed because you will get shocked if you touch it. It doesn't matter which side of the wire clamps to the tape, but both sides need to be clamped onto the tape. Because of the way FlexWatt heat tape is sold, it's cut from a large roll, so that means on the opposite edge of where your wires are connected, there's going to be some exposed metal, so you want to make sure that you cover that with some electrical tape, as you see here. 
Once you've finished prepping your heat tape, there are many ways that you can adhere it to the back of your refrigerator. Some people just use HVAC tape and just tape it all the way down. But here you can see that I took two long strips of double-sided tape and place it on the back side of the tape so that I can place it up against the wall without the silver tape all over the back. My plan is to install the heat tape with the wires pointing upwards or I'll hide it behind the false ceiling and wire it out the door. There's one thing you need to make sure that you do not do when you're installing the heat tape which is do not let it overlap on itself and do not let it roll up on itself because if you do it could fail and that could cost you all your eggs. This is what it looks like now that it's been installed with the wires hidden behind the false wall and the false ceiling. So the way that heat tape works is as long as there's a current, the heat tape will constantly be heating up. So you can't just plug it straight into the wall because that will just heat up until it cooks everything. So you need to hook it up into a thermostat plug. And usually a thermostat plug will have a probe that you can put into the chamber. And once you set a temperature on it, it will turn off once it reaches that temperature but usually around three degrees or so below that temperature, it will turn on and the heat tape will turn on, heating up the air, which will turn it off when it reaches the correct temperature that you set. This is the thermostat plug that I'm going to use and you want to take the temperature probe and place it near your eggs so that you can have a very consistent and real reading of what your egg temperature is like and not just the hot spots in the incubator. But this can fail and it might cook your eggs so you always want to have a second thermometer just in case so that you can know if the second thermometer and this thermometer plug match that you know that the inside temperature is what it is. This whole system is exactly the same as an under tank heater for lizards and snakes. I'm going to mount the thermostat plug right here to the side of the refrigerator and guide the wires through the crack in the door here into the false ceiling, hiding all the wires as best I can. Here you can see the entire incubator is completed. It has the heat tape here in the back and the shelves in, and there's also these totes that are going to hold all the eggs. These are six quart tubs and they can probably hold anywhere around 75 to 100 eggs each, but I don't think I'll get anywhere near that, at least not in the next year. If you decide that you want to build an incubator like this for yourself, I'll have all the links to the items that I bought inside the description box below. The hardest part to building an incubator like this is finding the correct fridge for the job. Of course you can always go with some cooler or a mini fridge that's broken or something like that, but if you want something that looks nice and has a glass door, you really have to keep searching and searching until you find that perfect one. And this one just happened to show up one day and I was actively searching for it. So if you want to have something like this, make sure you're constantly checking Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist looking for broken refrigerators. That's the only way it'll come cheap. Really old refrigerators on Facebook Marketplace are averaging somewhere around $200, but they usually won't sell broken ones because I'm guessing that broken ones don't sell. But I just happened to find another reptile breeder who happened to buy this fridge and just wanted to make her money back because she was downsizing. So I really kind of just got really lucky. But hopefully you can too if you get on Facebook Marketplace and you just start patrolling there every day. Earlier this season, a lot of my females laid for the first time. But fertility was very low because I don't think my males were very up to breeding. So I threw out most of the eggs because none of them started to chalk up and none of them also started to band or um, no veins were present in any of the eggs three weeks down the line. So most of the eggs were bad. But 
Uh, that kind of had to do a little bit with the incubator that I had at the time. It was another makeshift incubator, but one with uh, just a bucket and uh, a platform elevated above water and using a water heater to heat up the water to heat up the air. The humidity was too high and a lot of the eggs were uh, getting soaked and that's not good for the eggs. So I wanted to go for this route and this route is more of a heating the air instead of heating the water. And that's why I went with this incubator style instead. All in all, I think I spent roughly $180 building this entire incubator. Although it took me a couple weeks to get everything in the mail, it definitely beats commercial made incubators for size. Um, it, it really depends on how many eggs you're going to produce to determine whether this is worth it in the end. So if you do plan to produce a lot of eggs, you might want to look into building one of these. Otherwise, if you're just doing a single clutch or just a few eggs, you might want to just buy a commercial one, although it's going to be quite pricey. Hopefully you take something from that and uh, you get a little smarter. But if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help, and I'm shooting for 500 subscribers. So if you want to help me out, go ahead and click the subscribe button and click the little bell. Thanks for watching.